you know, the standards here are so high, but the environment to accomplish those standards is so low. So, <laughs> hey guys, we recorded two podcasts. We talked about a lot of interesting stuff, so make sure that y'all tune in for both of them. Here's part one. Here's part one. <laughs> All right, hey guys. Jared Hudson, Sha Ronnie here, bringing you your first podcast of 2022. So we slowed down a little bit over 2021 because we uh, wound up working on the uh, Afghanistan push a little bit. So a lot of our guys were out, a lot of our guys were away, and we weren't able to get to a podcast. But now we're getting in 2022. We're going to start trying to do these a little more regular, at least on every training trip. And then when we can, we're at home. So let's get started. All right, guys, so Jared here. Like I said, we got Thickums, a.k.a. Shy Ronnie, because every time you turn the camera on him, he uh, gets quiet and scared and doesn't know what to say, so hopefully he'll open up a little bit and tell us some good stories. Um, <laughs> no, to cover what we got going with TSI for 2022, uh, obviously we've already uh, announced to the people that uh, that follow our, our company site or TS, TSI social media, I'm running for sheriff, so we're working on the campaign. Again, if you want to support in that in any way, go to jaredhudsonforsheriff.com or just reach out on the company website and we can uh, the admin team will direct you there and uh, see what we have going on as far as the sheriff's office campaign. We, we talk about leadership and law enforcement all the time. I think we have about 100 episodes on leadership and law enforcement. And uh, so we, I finally decided, you know, through much prayer that, hey, this is something that I want to try to positively affect, at least for my county, Jefferson County, Alabama. And so that's what we're doing. So reach out, follow us there, keep, uh, keep up to date on what we got going on with the campaign. Uh, but as far as TSI goes for 2022, we got a SWAT school coming up here in Alabama uh, probably sometime in April. We have a few other closed law enforcement and DOD trainings between now and then, but uh, we do have a SWAT school that's open. So reach out to training at the shootinginstitute.com and uh, Shy Ronnie here will get with you, make sure he gets you the, the pricing, the gear list, the, the course curriculum or kind of the flow of the course. So that's coming up sometime in April. Reach out to training at the shootinginstitute.com for any training needs. As far as civilian training goes, we love scheduling civilian training in, especially as we uh, you know, kind of ebb and flow with governmental trainings. Again, like I said, we're scheduled out on a lot of different things, but as we have openings, we love civilian trainings. Go ahead and reach out to training at theshootinginstitute.com for, uh, for civilian training. Stuart will get you the information you need so you can uh, make the appropriate decision on what it is you want to do, whether it's rifle, pistol, whatever. And shotgun, for that matter. Troy put together a really nice shotgun curriculum. Oh, no, no, no. We, can put, we can put you some shotguns. Yeah, that's the shotgun Troy, stuff. Troy, the master shotgun. Master girl. shotgun. But that, but that comes from a lot of experience defending Wells Fargo <laughs> carriages back <laughs> like in 18, Pink, you know, 12 or whatever. Troy and Pinkerton, yeah. You think you're going to run an auto gun or a pump gun. Troy's going to run a double barrel. Let me get all that double money from that bank. You can get this sawed off shotgun. That's what you can get. That's right. You ain't got to know how to shoot with that. No. <laughs> forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Get sights and trigger. <laughs> Point in the general direction. That's what the instructions say. <clears throat> All right, family updates, man. So, uh, I don't know, your family updates. Yeah, my family updates. Update. I mean, I'm going to have a baby any yeah. second now, so mm -hmm. our third girl will be here yeah. literally any second. Just to be clear, Jared's not having a baby, his wife. That's right. Well, I could have a baby nowadays, right? You know? <laughs> well, I don't know. And that's, I'm, I'm, not, not, a, I'm yeah. not a scientist. I'm Google just, it right I'm now. Just, so just Google a scientist. Just no, just I'm Google just a it. From, from Gunner's Alabama. Yeah, you are just a dude from <laughs> which, is, which is my new home of record now. Was going actually to so when we're so we're doing this so we're doing this this uh, this podcast. But when if you're watching the YouTube video, what will have what will have been the uh, the media magician over here because he can do it. I don't even know how it works. I don't. I don't even know if that's a deserved title though because that would that would indicate that you have some type of superior so camera nah, skills. Man, no, this I don't is know what. I don't know. If that's what he's going to do. He's going to he's going to do this thing where he like shows the screen right now while I'm talking. He shows the screen, and you go to Google, and Google, can men have babies? And just see what Google says about it. Yeah. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible for men to become pregnant and give birth to children of their own. <laughs> I'm not kidding, bro. Dude, this is I, the world we live in, bro. There's, there's no, that's, this, is, this is the first thing that comes up on Google. In fact, it's probably a lot more common than you might think. <laughs> Google, I'm reading it right there yeah, because because this is just like this is just like does with antlers. You know what I'm saying? It's basically what you're right. It's like it's like no, I mean it's just like a doe having antlers. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, no, it just just happens. 
So yeah, there's so oh so we're doing gosh. this. It's just, that's the that's the world we live in now. By the way, that's your that's your Google answer. So when you you know try to Google all of your uh, all of your science, I mean you don't have to be a scientist to know that <laughs> to know to know that that, that men. Don't I feel like the stuff. qualifications for actually making like tough decisions in the world is becoming less and less. You know. What oh I'm yeah, saying? no critical thing <laughs> is out the window. <laughs> Are you qualified? Sure. Yeah, I spend forty-five minutes a day on Google. So yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. What do you got? That's, yeah. that's what you, you got. Questions about hey, the country's hey, economic hey, status. Hey, oh, what do you got? I got the Rogan. Google. The Rogan podcast. That's what the guy said. The the, the doctor Dude, that you just recently. The yeah. doctor with the white beard. What's y'all remember his name? What's his name? Uh, McCullough. No, not McCullough. The other doctor. The one who McCullough. invented the vaccines. Oh, I haven't listened to that one yet. I got. Dude, that's I, that's a good is, one. Is that the German guy? No, he's not German. He's American. He lives in Virginia and shoes horses. He said. <laughs> But yeah, he's just a regular dude. But he's like the doctor. He's the doctor. He holds the patents on the on the vaccines. But one of the things, and, and like he's been vaccinated, but he's against like vaccine mandates, right? He's like, no, you shouldn't. And he said your kids shouldn't have this at all. And he, but he's like the most. He's like, I'm the guy to go to on this stuff because I invented it, <laughs> you know. So and you look him up, but everybody's discrediting. Him. He said, you can't trust me. This is what he says. He says, you know what bothers me the most? The people that discredit me. You're like folks who have like uh, like quit a liberal arts degree. <laughs> You know, they got like three, no, three little, years. Little to no experience. Like, yeah. Just like this this McCullough guy or whatever, he has like 50 years of academic medical research. Yeah. And he's, like, mean, he's like the type yeah. of guy that people yeah. cite when they you write have, papers. You have, you have, he's, he had something, it was like 600 something publications in medical <laughs> journals from, from doing like reviews and research on things. And he's like, yeah, I have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> and this guy's, but hey, guess what? You go, but Google, go ahead and like, Google. No, can no. men have babies? And this, again, look, the answer look, comes this, up. Is, this is the most important thing. Hopefully, y'all are seeing the little cool guy screen that I this, talked about. They're right not. Here, he's going to botch that. There's no oh, way that's yes. coming up. <laughs> and so, but here's the most important. The most important thing that I'm getting out of all of this is how is how our your individuality is being stripped from you. No longer is it. We're just taking everybody's word for everything. Nobody's mm -hmm. doing any kind. It, I know we're making fun of the Google thing, but seriously though, like get out there and like read some stuff and like follow some people on these things and like develop your own opinion. Listen, Stuart, Stuart Harley doesn't get his opinion from Fox News. I might get some information from Fox News, but Fox News doesn't doesn't dictate what my opinion is. CNN doesn't dictate what my opinion is. Me taking the information in and then not only that, not only that, taking that information and then looking at what's going on around me in the world. And, and dictating on whether or not it's true or not. Yeah, it's and, and people aren't doing that. They're taking whatever these people are saying is gospel, and they're just, you know, and they're just saying, oh, no, well, it's got to be true because that guy has, like he said, he, he put a little liberal art degree or whatever. And so, Bro, you know, now he's, he's, just good at, he's just good at running his mouth. Let me tell it's you not, good it's, good it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that's what they're taking. All he's, all he's good at is just running his mouth. I'm good at running my mouth, but nobody listens to me. So, that's true. That's all I'm saying. Um, so family updates. My, uh, I'll have a, a little one here any second now. I was up at three thirty with a wife freaking freaking out because we thought the baby was here. A buddy of mine said, uh, "Yeah, she's gonna sneeze and this one's gonna hit the floor." Is this third one? That was Grady, the nicotine squirrel. Dang. I said, "How do you know so much about this nicotine squirrel?" He said, "Son, I got kids, grandkids. I got them all." He said, third one." It ain't gonna make it to the doctor. <laughs> I was like, dang, dang gum, great. Dang, that's a, Come on, be careful, bro. Yeah. So anyway, so it's supposed we'll see what happens, but I got baby on the way, which is kind of uh slow rolling us this time of year. Of course, we've got a lot of other guys uh stepping in. Christian's not here, but obviously he's he's moving down from yeah. uh Christian's your go-to guy right now. He is the he's, the, he's the most he's the he's, most dependable of people that you're considering for friendship. He is, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, he's he's gonna take. We all over. know that you have no friends. No, you just have friends. people that have been, assets. Yeah, yeah. You have assets, assets of people that have been considered for friendship for what ten years now? <laughs> ten, twelve years. Yeah, yeah. 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 Troy, it's, Troy, it's, Troy, a, it's a long. I mean, Troy's talking about Troy was like Troy's like fourteen years. Yeah, but Troy, just whenever you think Troy is that, because I would say. I mean, who would you think would be if you had to declare a friend right now? Like, like I said, knowing knowing everyone out there needs to know that you have none. Yeah. But if you had to say this guy's as close to being a, fr a friend as I can get, who would it be? Ah, man, would I, it be Troy? No, nah, I would. I would have to say it, it, it'd probably have to be Rebels because I, I don't want him to hurt me because his yeah. feelings got hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want him to like sneak in on my sleep or whatever and start like sawing at my it, body. He's capable of that. Oh, he's 100% capable of so, it. Just because he's, he's old and senile and 
I think that's the biggest concern. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So, I don't know. So, okay. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, we'll go with Rebel. But see, Troy's such a... But good, see, Troy, but Troy's, but, there, but Troy's there, too, you know. Troy's, but Troy's, he's a, Troy he's and Rebel's good, are... Troy's just not as hard as, as Mike. Because Troy, because if you said that to Troy, Troy would be like, oh, yeah, Mike's I mean, a good I got, guy. He's a good yeah, guy. No, no, you know, no, I, no, I think Mike he's my friend, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike deserves it. That'd be, that'd be my choice. Mike, but, but see, if you said that, if you said Troy to Mike, he'd be like, why is it not me? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's what, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But the other thing about Troy is, is Troy is once you, because he'll do that too, but nah, nah, Mike deserves it. You know, he's been here and what, and as soon as you walk off, he'll be like, hey, hey, Stu, you really think Mike would be a better friend? <laughs> <laughs> and you can just say, like, the, like the pride, and I'm like, Troy, come here, come here, come here, Papa Smurf. It's like, okay, man. Like, yeah, it's always yeah, you. It's yeah, always yeah, been yeah, you. Yeah, you stick with me, and we'll support each other emotionally. We don't have to stick around. I'm with telling this. you, man. It's just uh, <laughs> Troy. Troy has been around for the long haul, man. I mean, was, I met him when I was at Snipers. We were talking about the other day. His daughter is 24 or 26 mm -hmm. now. Maybe it's, I can't remember. And Luke, his son. I don't remember who's older. Luke or Emma's older. Luke's married now, but uh, I think Luke's older. Dude, he was 12 when I met them, and he's like 25 now. Married out of the house. See, Troy, Emma, if I had to open a farmer's co-op with kids. somebody, it would be Troy. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? He's got, I, he's got like 150 to, or 200 head of cattle. Dude, that's if I had to, like I said, if I had to open an Alabama farmer's co-op, I'd be like, hey, Troy, come on, come on down here, man. I got a job for us. Come be a farmer's co-op. You're going to love it. Do I'll, I'll let you was... teach shotgun in the back around the hay bales. Yeah, that's right. You know, he, 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 he would be like, hey, yeah, 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 man, I'm on the one. Got a good job doing that. That's right. That's right. Hey, man, can you spot me some gas money for the Tacoma and I'll be down there, man. Do that Tacoma. <laughs> that Tacoma is a good truck. Yeah, three hundred ninety thousand. The miles Tacoma long. adequately describes Troy. If Troy was a truck, it'd be a blue <laughs> two thousand and five <laughs> Tacoma Toyota four door Tacoma four door two hundred ninety four thousand miles on it. Dude, that's that's exactly what it is, man. Because it's four door. It's a four wheel drive. Yeah, it's just four wheel drive. Yeah. That's a that would be Troy if he was a car. Yeah. Like it is. It is literally the exact <laughs> replica of Troy if he was a car. <laughs> There it is. So there's our family updates. Baby on the way. Welcome, Troy. How about you? Hey, how about, uh, yeah, Troy, we miss you. Hopefully you get over your COVID sickness. He's been eat up because he can't play pickleball. <laughs> That's been his biggest problem. <laughs> he ain't played pickleball in weeks. All right, far as all, you can do an entire podcast on Troy. Because, I mean, I mean, where are you going to start? Where are you going to start at on Troy? Well, you got aliens. You got aliens. You got pickleball. Pickleball. All right, you got his Tacoma. Because that's literally, it, it might as well be a person. Like I'm sure that he, I'm sure that he gets child tax on the Tacoma. Yeah, you know, like like it's basically, basically a person. Yeah. So is. so what else? Uh, he's a he's, job. A, he's he, always looking for a job. He's, you know, a, he's got a great job. Yeah, I mean, but he's he's, he's a always, he's, he's he's always, always looking for another job. Man, a guy can get a job doing that. That's right. I can make a lot of money. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But what jobs has he had? He's been a truck driver. Oh man, he so, had, he owned a truck and company. Yeah, Dude, so, some guys in Mexico stole his trailers. No, like that went across true. the that border and then they didn't come back. And yeah. he, said, he was like, wait, wait, wait what happened? He's, Dude, he's a contractor in Afghanistan. You can do, an entire, you can do yeah. an entire podcast on Troy. And Troy it be, is like, it'd be super interesting. Troy is like, uh, uh, like a Tom, like a bunch of Tom Cruise movies put together where Tom Cruise is always doing this different job. Like he's a bartender yeah. or he's, you know, a daggum CIA agent or he's this, you know, Army SF guy, and it's always the coolest job in the world. Well, that that's Troy. Yeah. Like he's done for, all the, for that week. And he, is, yeah, for, for I don't think week, anybody yeah. could do it better than this guy right now for this that's, week. That's true. Yeah, you know, he's all in. He's all in. He just goes back. He goes back to what he does. Do you hear what we worked? Worked. He went down and helped build. Yeah, service seat belt warrants and mask, you know, mask man oppressing the citizen of Jackson County, Indiana, or Johnson County, Indiana. So the uh, did you hear the one where he did a job down in? Uh, Texas somewhere be standing up some kind of like military base like uh, like structures like yeah. I'm trying to think what it was it wasn't it was for like an, a, a big op that they were doing like a big yeah. training op and he was just standing up these tents and these structures to make it look like a fob overseas and they're down there building yeah. he's working yeah. on it mm -hmm. and and one of the guys that was working on it was a uh, was a Mongols uh, <laughs> Mongols biker gang guy and wouldn't talk to Troy for like three days because they said, hey, you're a cop. Yeah. Where's your cop? And Troy, Troy's, Troy's like, best oh, friend. Yeah, then, then all of a sudden the guy really liked Troy. He's like, you know, Troy's like, oh, man, I don't care. Mongols, cool, whatever, bro. And so the guy started talking to him and they said, yeah. he said, yeah, I'm thinking about getting out of the Mongols anyway. 
And uh, Troy's like, why is that? And the guy, the guy's like, man, they made some rule. We gotta wear helmets now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, that's, that's that's where I draw the line uh, to being a part of this club. Yeah, you're gonna make me wear a DOT approved helmet. <laughs> that's what, that's what he said. I'm out. So I mean, Troy has I'm out of here, man. The stories that Troy has are are, are unbelievable. The uh, but I just think it's funny, that Troy. You know, Troy became friends with a. With he would do that though. Yeah. Like that is if if you're like, hey, who who would you think would become friends with an outlaw biker gang member? Uh, Troy. Troy did. Yeah, yeah, definitely Troy. And not only that, probably accepting that would probably let him in. He probably would. Like, yeah. Man, this guy's great. Knowing that he's a police officer, they would be like, oh, man, yeah, no, you come to all our meetings, Eddie. You can come. Yeah, you come hang out. Yeah, yeah. Got to work home with though. Yeah, yeah. Come over here to the clubhouse. He'd ride a bike. That's how I bring this combo, man. We put our bikes in the Tacoma. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whenever it rains and stuff. If you, if you, at any point in time, if you are trying to badmouth people that you're associated with in a room with just two people, with them not here to defend themselves is the way to do it. Okay? Because because everything that we're saying right now about Troy Dehart is true because Troy Dehart can't sit here and tell us that it's not true. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so that's, like, that's all. Troy Dehart, those that y'all that, that don't know, Troy Dehart is a space ranger. That's what Troy's job is. He's a space <laughs> ranger. <laughs> and he can't tell anybody otherwise because he's not here. Oh, man, that is perfect. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. We just covered story time with uh, story time with Harley there. So I want to hear right. about your uh, want to hear about your your, your wife's desire to uh, harm animals in <laughs> Madison County. <Dude. laughs> Freezing oh my cats, gosh, man. I don't. Want to... you, you didn't even. I get, wonder we you talked. Didn't even to... get let in. When are we talking about cats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking cats, like you, you weren't even let in. You're standing out in the cold. You can't. Even I, I don't like the cats. Okay, because yeah. I just don't. I I don't like cats in general because they are just they just look the way that they. I guess move and operate here in the world. They just don't. They're just not a trustworthy creature. Like if that makes, I don't know if that makes sense. People that don't like cats, they're probably like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like you just people, people yeah, that love yeah, cats. You can see it in their eyes. Hate, hate you can see the way they move. There, yeah. you, you just can't trust cats. Yeah. So I don't trust cats, right? So I don't. So I don't like them. Well, she hates them. She is like afraid, like a fearful reaction to the cat. If it gets within ten feet, then that means it's going to touch her, and she doesn't. She Jordan, doesn't, not your kid, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. My wife. Well, so apparently we we come under the. For some reason, we think that, that our house has mice, but we but we have no confirmed sightings of mice, right? <laughs> so we have to get these cats in order to combat the unconfirmed mouse problem within our house, right? And she, and so. I, so I'm trying to rationalize. <laughs> hey, look, why do we have cats when we have an unconfirmed we have an unconfirmed mouse problem? And she comes back with, "Well, have you seen any mice?" And I was like, "No, that's what I'm trying to tell you. We haven't." She's like, "It's because of the cats." <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> "Of course you haven't seen them." Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the cats are here, yeah. and it's not like you know, it's not like one cat or two cats. It is an entire nation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Outlaw street cats that are living at my back door. Every time I walk by the door, they're sitting there, like watching my entire family. Like the little one year old walks by, and you can tell even the little ones. They're sitting there, and they're like, "Oh yeah, no, 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 we take down that one year old. Uh, no, you let us in the house, we're taking down that one year old." And so that's what, so. Yeah, and they're, anyways. So we go out of the house last night because we got this. We got this thing now where the one year old, like, she wants a night night ride. We had to put her in the car. We have to drive around. So that she'll go to sleep. Well, my portion of that is opening the door and beating back the cat horde. <laughs> and, he's trying, and he's trying to get in. All right, so I'm, so I'm get back, you know, get back, blah, 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 you know, you know, try not to, you know, try not to stress the baby out so that she can go to sleep or whatever. So I'm beating those back, and and she's, you know, every any time a shadow or something moves, she is, she's screaming. Well. <laughs> I guess I've come. I don't really know. I, listen, I want to make it clear that I don't like the cats, but I've come to sympathize with the cats because she's like every time I walk by the door, they're like looking at me, and I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, it's 19 degrees outside. I was like, I was like, they're standing by the door because the air is coming out of the crack in the door. I was like, they're just trying not to die. I was like, they don't want to attack you. I was like, they're like, they're trying to survive right now, and I was like. I can sympathize with that. I was like, you did that the other night. I had a bunch of stuff in my hand, and you're walking by the door, and I'm like looking at you like, hey, can you let me in? It's cold. I got a bunch of stuff in my hand. And so 
So anyway, the whole situation, I mean, it's a it's a constantly evolving situation. I know some people are like, I don't understand what the big deal about the cat. I, I don't like the cats. I don't like them. I wouldn't like the cats. No. I, don't, I, I don't like them. I don't like them. This is a perfect segue into what Ben asked for earlier that we got is the, the deer story. I don't even know if you've heard this story. This might be a story that you might not have Well, heard. and you're pumping out 40 stories so, a week. So yeah, it's stuff to keep up with. Yeah, and them. then if I don't know them, I just make them up. Right? Or steal them. Yeah, we're still definitely still <laughs> definitely still. You don't have a copyright on that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my now. Because <laughs> if I put it on the jail. podcast, it happened to jail. It happened to jail. <laughs> so go ahead. So when I was doing this uh, back when I left the, the the sheriff's office, you know, work when I came and work sheriff's office where I met you at. When I left sheriff's office uh, to run the company, I started doing contracts doing the wildlife. You know, contracts. We do wildlife calling all over the nation, or not just calling. We were up in uh, New York working on a project where we were, uh, and even in the Hamptons where we would dart deer, and they wouldn't because they wouldn't, they didn't want you to kill them. They they wanted you to dart them, and then they would either do the, whatever surgery on the ovaries or whatever uh, surgery on the uh, reproductive organs of the of the bucks and the does, right? And so we would dart them. They'd pass out. Uh, a lot of times we'd bring them in. They would do the work in the in the in the veterinary room where we bring them in and we take them back out in the field, wake them up, they go on their way. Or we would dart them and then they would do the work in the field, right? So those are the couple things you got going. But when you would dart these deer, they had transmitters that would go in them. Um, much like when you're, you know, when you're coon hunting, we have the dog has the collar on, right? When you're running the, the raccoons and the dog, you could tell when he's treed. It'll go up and down on the tree and you can track the dog collar with his telemetry is what it's called. So a very similar sort of thing is attached to this dart that when the dart sticks in the deer with the, the drug that's going to knock it out, it runs off and you use telemetry to track the deer. Well, sometimes those darts bounce out, okay? Uh, and you still try to go and find the deer. Now, the funniest thing about deer, you know, is I've you know, deer hunting my whole life and then doing these deer calls. When you started darting them, one thing deer do, they snore like, you want know, to talk to something these like a CPAP machine? A deer. <laughs> I can't tell you how many I found in some of these areas. Just I, I just tell whoever was with me, I go, shh, yeah. just be quiet. And you, and you listen, you hear. <laughs> listen. What? And you would get till you find the sound, and then the deer would snore. Lauren, I brought this before we had kids. I brought her on one of the jobs, and she was able, and she thought it was the funniest thing in the world because these deer they snore. They just, just lay out there, just sawing logs, dreaming away, you know? dreaming away, buddy, just hey, chasing down. There's the rainbow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, man. This so this uh, this. I'd go out and find these deer a lot of times. The darts would bounce out. You have these wildlife biologists, you, and a lot of those guys, whether they're out of school or not, they didn't come from a necessarily a hunting background or background where they yeah. spent a lot of time in the woods, but they're in wildlife biology. And so I'm with this one biologist and we're looking for a deer. The guy wants to come and, come and say, hey, we got a deer with a dark bounce out over it. See if you can go find it. So we're looking for a deer, you know, in the old, uh, uh, the old poacher skills, coming up good with a spotlight, looking for eyes, looking for whatever, right? Just running yeah. and riding around and in your neighborhood. Yeah. And I see a white belly. I'm, late. About, I'm a conservationist. Yeah, right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I see a white belly leaned up that like pointed up and I'm like, hey, that's a that's a deer right there. That's a white he's like he's like, where? And I'm like, you see the white belly right there, the white underside? He's like, Yeah, there's a deer laying out there on the ground. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, yeah, that's a we were only darting bucks at this point in time to do the to the surgeries on the bucks. And so I said, and I looked and I said, Yeah, that's a buck right there. You could see his see his antlers sticking up. I said, yeah, that's a buck. Yeah, that's 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 probably the deer that was, because we're in the area, the general vicinity. Yeah. I said, that's probably deer's daughter. He just laid out there, passed out in the side yard of this guy's house. So I go, all right, so I slip over. I said, come on, we're going to walk over there. I got a hand injection. And I tell this guy, I said, carry the gun in case he stands up. That way you can shoot with the dart gun, so you can shoot him with the dart. And I've got a hand injection with the, the ketamine in it. And I'm just going to go over and kind of sit on him real quick and hit him in the, in the, uh, butt cheek right here with a with a ketamine injection to make sure he's sedated now you have to be careful that you know because you don't want to put so much drugs this deer has already had a dart in him right mm -hmm. um and now i'm going to hit him with some more drugs you know to keep him asleep well we don't want to you know like i don't want this guy to shoot him with a dart gun like it's going to be one or the other hand yeah. injection or dart gun not both you, you can't over inject these animals with the with this this sedative and so I'm slipping up to him and as I'm, I'm sneaking, I'm making a lot of noise with some leaves on the ground. I'm like, should I take my shoes off, you know? And then take my jacket off. Next thing you know, I'm basically walking through the yard in my freaking underwear, right? I yeah. mean, I've got all of my stuff, stuff's out of my pockets. I've got this hand injection in me. <laughs> and I'm slipping up on this deer. And there's and no documented evidence of this, though. Like, this oh, but there's a guy that was there that watched it. That's the only document. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a, but there's no like pictures or. No, there's no pictures. Well, there's a picture. I've got a picture of the deer. 
I got a picture of the deer at the uh, at the vet at the veterinary table. Oh, that's not, so that's that's, un that's so interesting. I slip I, I slip up to the dude. The guy's got he's got the he's got the. Uh, <laughs> I still have my pants on. I just want to tell him underwear makes sound good. So, but you know, but I'm saying I have nothing. I don't have anything on me but a hand injection. No shoes. No, I mean I'm in a t-shirt. It's cold. On. It's cold, right? I take my jacket off because my jacket was like this jacket right here. You know, making all that noise. And I'm like, I've got to. And, and he's not snoring, though, like they normally snore when they've been shot with a dart gun. I mean, I'm just looking. He's just not He's not snoring. And I'm, I'm, I remember thinking this was weird. Yeah, that's it. That's what, So I'm just real so. And I slip up on him, and I get from about me to the other side of this table away. Right? So I'm sitting here, and I'm doing the, I'm doing the old creep like this right here. Yeah. Got the hand injection for the drink. And I'm going to jump on him. And since this is yeah. normal, we're just going to jump on him. Yeah. Wrap my legs around him, hold his horns around, and hit him with a hand injection. Cradle him into a more sedate sleep. <laughs> and so, as I get, I get from about me to the table front, and it, he was a little ten point buck. Right? He go, he goes, whoop! <laughs> that old head sit up and look right at me, eyes this big like a cartoon, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I jumped on him. Drove his antlers to the ground and wrapped my legs. This deer drug me. He was going. He started going. <laughs> just roaring to the top of his lungs, that old buck grunt roar. And he was dragging me through this guy's yard. This nice, so solid, resilient, man. Dude, 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 white, a white tail had a white tail hard they have, to kill. They man. have they have more of a will to live dude. than any animal on God's planet, right? Dude, dude. So this thing is going. And I'm holding, because I'm, I don't want to be, go I don't want this thing to gore me. Yeah. Right? No, I mean, no, no, I mean that's. So I'm know. holding on to these antlers right here, <laughs> as tight as I can, as this yeah. thing is going, and he's just dragging me down the hill. He's running because I've got, he can't get up because I got my legs as tight as I can. Right, yeah. doing jujitsu, doing collegiate level wrestling, all that stuff. Right. I can tell you, I have never wrestled a man that is near as hard, doesn't matter what size they are, that is hard to wrestle fight, as a deer. <laughs> just like the fight. A white-tailed deer, dude. And they will, they drag you through the woods. They run. So I'm just hanging on for dear life. And, and I don't have the hand injection. I'm, I'm looking for it, but I lost it when I jumped on of this joker. Yeah. And I'm about 35 yards. This biologist that's with me, he's got these like, uh, what do we What do we do? I'm like, get some drugs in this deer. <laughs> This thing, and the lights come on on the outside, they're auto lights, you know? <laughs> So the lights are on, we're in the, it's like a little bit of snow, you know, it's the, uh, that's why it's so slidey, but it was, sage, Hudson, it, was it was like a, like a flurry, like, you know, a, like snow flurry, it's right? Like, and the environment to fight a deer in. Oh, dude, doing. I mean, I'm, this thing, and there's just this huge, I look, like when a I look back, ballet environment. <laughs> dude, it is, it is, it is, it's like, and this is January in New York. Heck yeah. In the Hamptons, you know, there's sir. a slide for you know 40 yards you yeah. know through this dude yard i can see back where we just slid through this i mean it's nice manicured grass but snow and leaves i went down and this deer's and, I, and i'm sitting here and i finally get him he stops dragging me right yeah. we get to this little divot point and i'm sitting here and you i'm petting his head right now, shh, trying to calm him right so he's and he's still just he's still just bah, bah. Trying to get calm down, right? <laughs> he's like, I got this big man on me. <laughs> trying to ride me like yeah, a horse. He's laying in the snow and he's like, man, we'll be the worst case scenario right now. So, dude, with no shirt on and a ketamine dart jump on me. Nah, that would never. Ah! <laughs> so, it's happening. This dude comes running down there, of course, with the gun. And I'm on the deer, and I'm like, no, 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 don't shoot yeah. the gun, not the gun, not the gun. He's got a laser on it, this little laser light. Because <laughs> he's got this dart on it. Get a hold of yourself, Rick. <laughs> he's, he's like, oh, what up? I said, just put the gun down and go find the, find the hand inject I lost. So he goes and gets it. <coughs> And of course we're trying to we're trying to be this car. We're like we're like yell whispering. Yeah. It's like in it's like in the, it's like in the other guys where they're like where they're sitting there fighting at his funeral. It's like what's going on, guys? You know that's what that's what it's, it's like. like right? the block yeah. yeah. And so we're like yelling whispering because it's yeah. like two in the morning in the Hamptons. We don't wake anybody up or whatever it is there. And so we're. Uh, <laughs> And, and dude, this and, and he goes up. He's like, shot he's like, yeah, like, I got it. I got it. You don't have it. Don't take the shot. <laughs> shot. Don't take the don't shot. Take the shot. <laughs> All I can see is getting hit in the love handle right here. Getting hit in the butt cheek with, with the dart. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this deer. It, it, it's starting to calm down now. This deer's starting to calm down now. So I'm, a, I'm sitting there, I'm like, shh, I'm just kind of. And he's starting he's to come calm down, or he's just. He's starting. No, no, no. He's starting. Well, he's probably gassed, too. I'm gassed. From the, he's starting from to calm the man down. That's on him. <laughs> so 
<laughs> my legs, it'd be like uh, like in jiu-jitsu when you get somebody in your guard, right? Oh, yeah. Except yeah. I'm on his back, and so I've got my legs wrapped around his tight in, in the guard, right? And holding yeah. these horns for dear life. I mean, because no, if I let go of his head, to. I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. You're going to take brown so, times in the face, man. So anyway, he finds the ketamine injection in that path that we... And he comes down there... And he goes to stick it, and, and as I'm sitting on, like, again, I'm, I'm I'm on this deer like this right here. How much comes this way. Real quick, how much confidence do you have in Rick? I mean, on, <laughs> I, I mean, on a scale of one to ten, are we talking, zero are we talking about Rick's going to come up, put the put it in the pickle barrel, and we're going to get, or Rick's coming down the hill, falling, injects himself, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Rick is now, and Rick is now out, and you're just like, this is worst case scenario for a gameologist. <laughs> You, there is no help coming. <laughs> that's, You're that's, just breathing hard, laying on the deer. Laying on deer. Out. Yeah. Rick's <laughs> over there catching some Z's. Just, man, I was exhausted. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's right. He's like, I got it. I was like, hey, wait, 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 wait. No, he pulls yeah, Jared, it. I'm doing good. I'm just, oh. <laughs> I was like, man, I said, put it in him right here. Not here. I'm on my, I, I was so worried he was going to accidentally stick me in because yeah. if the deer started kicking or whatever. Because he has no and so like, he has And this guy, he goes, okay, okay, okay. And he gets the injection, he goes, of course the deer goes, rrr, 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 rrr. I laid on this deer for 25 minutes before the drugs and he finally goes to and he's snoring. I'm like, all right, we're good. So I easily get up. We we put the mask on him because you gotta put a mask on him so they don't have the the, the lights on. Get the mask on him. We get time, we, we we carry him up, we put him on the little litter and stretcher, put him in the back truck, take him to the uh, take him to the the, the vet. We weren't doing this one yeah. in the field, we're doing they take yeah. him to the uh, veterinary place, whatever, where they did the surgery. We take him in there. The vet hooks him up. He's on all this stuff. He's like, hey, this deer is fine or whatever. And I tell him the story. I said, I think this deer is dark. So they, they start looking. There is no dark wounds on that deer. The only drugs that deer got was a ketamine injection. Perfect. And the guy looked at me and he said, you slipped up on a sleeping deer, which is probably why he wasn't snoring. <laughs> that's why he said. So anyway, so that's my claim to fame. But I can tell you this much. And I do this sometimes when I go yeah. around and speak. I'll tell a couple different stories. A lot, most things in life, they're never as bad as you think they're going to be. Like everybody thinks it's like, oh man, I've got to, I've got to go through. I got, I got to do buds. You know, I got to go through bud training and become a seal. Yeah. Buds is really not as bad as you think. It sucks, but it's not as bad as you think. Uh, you know, I got to get, I got to get punched in the face. That's a big thing with law enforcement. Like everybody needs to be punched in the face before they become a cop. But you know, nobody is right because as soon as they get punched in the face, they freak out if it's the first time. Getting yeah. punched in the face ain't that bad, right? But everybody gets amped up and worried about it. You get your nasal cavity no, crushed. Nothing, nothing so is as know. bad. Nothing is as really as bad as you think it is, right? Like nobody's ever, ever prepared for a kid. I got another third kid on the way. Well, I mean, I, your I, first I, kid. I is would like to go ahead and make a statement. I would much rather fight a ten point than go to buds. I don't know, man. <laughs> but, no, it, but at it, least it's, 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 it's the, the duration yeah, of buds. The, the only reason of that is because there's no water. Well, that's true. You know, yeah, so like I'm not guy. listen. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'm a water guy. I'm not a water guy. I would much rather avoid brow tons. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody yeah, said, get yeah. in that surf and swim ten miles up. Nah, bro. I'm just not gonna fight this white tail deer you got on the beach <laughs> yeah. right here. Yeah. Is there an alternative to this evolution? You know, maybe like fighting a moose or something. <laughs> I'm into that. Yeah. <laughs> get my face slapped off by a grizzly bear right here on this beach. I'm not going in that water. Though. Sorry, uh, man. It's cold. So I got, I got another. I got a funny story. I got a funny story for you on that. But yeah. The uh, but most most everything is not as bad as our mind makes it out to be. Like we build it up to be worse than it is. But I can tell you right now, jumping on a white-tailed deer, a white-tailed buck, is 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 just as bad as you think it would be.